Hi, welcome to The Daily. My name is Brendan Malone. Yesterday, I was reading an opinion column in the uh, paper uh, where someone was decrying the behaviour of uh, an NRL, um, Australian Rugby League star, uh, and some loutish, misogynistic behaviour that they'd been engaging in. And make no mistake about it, it was just childish, boorish, um, misogynistic, juvenile sort of behaviour. Um, the problem I had, though, was with the whole response to this was to say, we just need to tell men to cut it out and stop being louts and stop behaving like this. Now, I agree with you, men shouldn't be louts, but the problem is, I don't know if that's really a solution, simply saying to someone, stop doing that. I think you, first of all, you have to give a, a good why explanation. You have to explain why this behavior is a problem. That's the first thing. Secondly, I think you also have to model to them uh, an alternative a way of living out their masculinity that is healthy and good and virtuous. And to do that, that means acknowledging some important realities. So first of all, we have to acknowledge that masculinity is a real thing. It's not just a social construct. It is a real thing and it does matter. And that for men, uh, if they're going to live this out well, then we need to show them and model that to them and also uphold and value good examples of virtuous masculinity. The funny thing is I actually think our culture does want to do this because when you see uh, or hear stories about men who have displayed those traits of, uh, of a good, healthy and virtuous masculinity, we all praise that. Uh, universally, I think, we, we, we look to that and we say, yeah, that, that what that man did was a good thing. And, and most men would look at that and say, I hope I can emulate that same sort of behavior in some way in my own life. So I think our, our culture knows that, that, that this is what we're supposed to be doing. The problem is we don't do enough celebrating those sort of behaviors and modeling those sort of behaviors to men. And I think one of the most effective tools that we have in this struggle against um, misogynistic behavior, against the whole rape culture environment that we now find ourselves confronted with, one of the most important tools, yet it is completely overlooked, is the importance of fatherhood. Not just the importance of fatherhood, but actually celebrating the role of fatherhood and holding it up in culture and in pop culture, and in a wider society, and in our institutions, and in academia, as a fundamentally important institution. Obviously, motherhood is also important, but in this particular case, if you're talking about a young boy uh, who is being raised into adulthood, if he doesn't have modeled for him a good, healthy, authentic masculinity, so he doesn't see it around him 24-7. He doesn't see a father who knows how to show respect and care for his mother. He doesn't see a father who knows how to show authentic love and self-sacrificial love by giving of himself for his family. He doesn't see a father who knows how to interact with other women in a healthy and authentic way. He doesn't see a father who understands that pornography is not a good thing because that uh, allows him as a man to take women and objectify them and, and uh, walk all over them their human dignity and his own in the process. If he doesn't see a father who, who knows how to interact with his sisters well, um, then guess what? Where exactly is he going to learn that healthy, authentic masculinity from? It's, to me, uh, just shouting at men and writing opinion columns and saying, you know, don't do this, you've got to stop behaving like this. Uh, all you're doing is pointing to the problem, but it's not really offering a solution. And, and it's kind of like standing on the deck of the Titanic and, uh, and, and you've got a little plastic bucket and you're throwing water overboard and, and hoping that that is going to fix the problem. It really isn't. So our society, I think, needs to actually start upholding the institution of fatherhood as something profoundly good and important. And we need to celebrate it. And we need to actually start saying to men, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is how you're supposed to live this out. And we need to support fathers and help fathers and celebrate with them when they live out that healthy and authentic expression of masculinity in their fatherhood because what they're doing is hugely important. They are teaching the young men that they are raising in their households how to be good, healthy uh, and, and authentic uh, men and they are teaching the young women that they are raising in their households what authentic masculinity is supposed to look like and why they shouldn't settle for second best or anything less than the best out of the men in their life as they get older. So this is really quite Important, it's profoundly important. And the other thing that's really important about uh, celebrating and um, and enshrining a protection and a care and a nurturing of fatherhood as an institution in our society, like we should do for motherhood too, obviously as well, is that uh, that it actually is a more lasting and long term solution to the problem of misogyny and rape culture.
The only way we are ever going to hope to turn this around is when we start addressing the root problem. The misogyny and the rape culture is a fruit. It isn't the root cause. It isn't the root problem. It is a fruit that grows on a particular type of tree. And unless we are prepared to start actually addressing the tree and healing that tree, then we're not going to be able to see any lasting or effective uh, response to that rotten fruit that now permeates a lot of culture. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily. <laughs>